Okay. Uh, good morning, dear friends. And lovers of freedom. We multiple writers are reaching you live and direct from the office of Sir um, Barrister Ifani Jofo. This morning we got very urgently that uh, one of the cases of our leader will be heard at the Federal High Court before Justice uh, Ekwo and uh, before our crew could uh, make all the necessary arrangements to get to the place the case was already heard and uh, briefly so we are live with our barrister in his office and uh, we want to hear from him to give us a briefing of the case and how it went and uh, what their friends should be expecting this morning Good morning, Barrister. Thank you so much, uh, Abara. Um, this morning, please, we don't have all the necessary gadgets for volume. Please, I, I beg you, beer friends and lovers of freedom, to do beer with us. We're going to manage our natural voices so that uh, we can give you all the best. Please, do beer with the Barrister. He will stretch his voice, and uh, we're begging him as well to do his uh, <laughs> best on this because we don't have all our gadgets. It came very urgent this morning. Thank you very much, Barista. You can continue. Okay, thank you so much, my brother. My first of all, I apologize for not uh, uh, informing you of the proceedings of this morning in good time. You are meaning you in person because uh, uh, you recall that last week you kind of um, clarified on the announcement made by some persons over the social media about Saturn declared on Tuesday. That was this week, Tuesday. So, and in the course of doing so, we made it known to the public that Mazen Namdekano Oyendo. Uh, his mother is coming up this week. We have two of his mothers coming up this week. One on extraordinary condition, and uh, one challenging the constitutionality otherwise of um, new parties, criminal parties uh, direction on the fire court uh, on terrorism, on terrorism matters. So we have suit to file in respect that. So and two of them were joined today for further mention. So it came up last. That was on June of last June this year, and the uh, are joined today for further mention. So we. We made it known to the public that it's coming up this week. We are not specific to the date. In um, view of some issues we are trying to manage around our area, so around our zone. So, because of the fact that once someone hears about when this case coming up, without uh, confirming whether we'll be in court or not, so uh, people will start, with, we, we take advantage of that pronouncement to be causing problem in, the, in our, our zone. So, we are trying to manage such situation as far as we are done managing it will start announcing in good time but once Oyendu is coming to court or there's a matter of interest there's a serious matter involving like when the criminal will be delivered the court of appeal on his case and uh, then that in that case you will hear it will announce through the approved channels as to the dates given to us by court of appeal or when we're going back to the court so by other segments of his cases we have in federal court and other places we should find a way of managing it and possibly Letting those folks to know and also uh, getting across to Muchineke uh, in due time as to when to come up. So, thank you so much. However, this matter came up this morning. The one who filed against the federal government of Nigeria, the AG Federation, uh, on his kidnapping and external uh, uh, to Nigeria. So, that's the matter is the, actually the main case dealing with the constitutionality, the interpretation of the relevant laws, international laws on. It's under addition, particularly section 15 of uh, the Establishment Act, uh, LF, uh, LF, uh, LFN 204 of Nigeria. So we we also uh, we're inviting the court to interpret this section of the law. So and also Article 124 of um, African Charter of Human and Peoples' Rights and, and uh, other relevant international laws uh, which Nigeria were are in breach of in the manner in which they are abducted and. Doctor Daniel Dumas and the Canada brought into Nigeria to fair trial. So these laws are uniform, are united in opinion that once the the, the authority of the Nigerian government is in breach of these laws, that Nandi Kano can no longer be detained, talkless of being tried in any law. So we are now inviting the court through what we call we filed in court within so much to interpret the legislative section of the laws and also make pronouncements there too. If the law, if the court found that this law, the, the, the fragment of Nigeria is in breach of these laws, 
then the capital the courtway declare the detention and the subsequent trial illegal and restore him back to where they brought him from and they can't they can't shy away from it because it's an international mandate it's a mandate it's, it's, it's mandatory on the part of the government that they must respect this law they enter into they are part of this that's one of these laws so uh, this is the first case that came up today for further mention and the courts and the processes fire uh, fire out of time were regularized by the by the parties so and matter adjourned for adjourned to, you know, to december 4th the court actually wanted to hear the matter next they said no i have to appeal, appeal, appeal to the court to understand the sensitive nature of the case and my lord uh, subsequently adjourned the matter to december 14th for hearing on the merit and as we understand the schedule is very tight i understand they had a lot of uh, cases on his hand but i said no this part of the serious cases you must consider it's lot people consider because because of its effects on other matters, sister cases in court. So, and the starship obliged us and they joined the matter on December 14th. So, however, it's pertinent also to make it known to the public at this point in time, and also to Mochineke, that it's in this case, this case, that the federal government, for the first time, admitted before the court, uh, apart from their, their open admission made in the court of appeal at, at last adjourned it. So admitted before the court of appeal, in what before this court, in what they file in the accountability to the men's suit that they kidnapped Mazoy and Donald Khan in uh, Kenya and also subjected him to detain him in their fa in a facility, a good facility that was the said. So and consequently brought him here. So it was contained in the accountability on oath. So um it's no longer in this pool of, of why we all in court. They are not, they have by, by their own very admission accepted violating international laws, extant international laws that required Namdi Mazoni and Duncan to be subjected to extradition proceedings if at all he has committed an offense of law. In Kenya, there before, full due process has laid down under Article 1214 and uh, 1214 of the African Human People's Rights and also, and Section, uh, section 15 of the of the of the of the extension act e25 law elephant 204 uh, and also the rules of the provost that section which was on rules of specialty that that those conditions will be fulfilled that condition means he must be subjected to extradition proceedings later on by law before he will be tried tra he will, he will render to nigeria so with that they are all in breach of this laws so and they are accepted in their process before the court trying to justify his abduction that it, it was illegal the manner he was about. So, in, 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 their, in their efforts to justify the fact they are arrested, they call it arrest in there, in what they file in court, and the extraordinary addition to Nigeria, they accepted in black and white and was arrested in Kenya, was abducted in Kenya. So, and that settles the case. So, it's now adjourned to 14th <coughs> of um, December for full hearing. For full hearing. So, and I believe that justice and nothing more than justice have happened in this case. And we, we are holding tenaciously to the fact that. We'll get just at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barista. And uh, once more, uh, dear friends, uh, we we'll also want to know uh, we are still expecting the uh, ruling on the appeal uh, of last month. So we've not had any briefing on that. Uh, do you have anything to say to dear friends? Uh, of course, you know, the, uh, 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 sometimes in the past, I mean, I mention of um, certain things about the procedure of our court of appeal. And I, just like what I, what happened in, in, in Benin a few days ago, I, went, I was in Benin too, on Tuesday and when they called up in Benin to do some matters. And all the all the, 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 the are all adopted and joined for judgment. So once a matter is adopted, groups are adopted in color appeal and are joined, judgment, judgment are usually reserved. These are not being given. But what transpired in open court is, is clear that this judgment will be delivered soon i have this feeling that this judgment will be delivered on or before the end of this month because of certain questions and clarifications we made in open court court was trying to ask the question of the matter before the high court before the lower court and we told him and also and they they assured us in open court that we may not expect this month the judgment to last longer and we'll deliver it as quick as possible so i have this feeling and the belief that we don't deliver this year. all the important judgment will deliver this year. And the most important thing is that justice can only be delayed and not denied. So, and uh, it is sacrosanct that justice will be done in this case. We don't expect anything less than that. 
So, and in the fullness of time, possibly within the month, we we'll hear it out from the horse's mouth, and it will happen. So, because we have done our own part, and believe in God, and God will come for some success. And don't even do with the gang freedom, not only then freedom, you come out victorious and you'll be free. So. Okay. Uh, Barrister, thank you very much. Just a day ago, we received the good news of our, one of our brothers, uh, Michael, uh, who was uh, head at the, I think, uh, Omaha prisons, and uh, we received the uh, news of his freedom. Um, we don't know how it happened, but we are believing that uh, all of our brothers and sisters who are at the different uh, detention centers and uh, cells and prisons uh, will be released. We want to hear from you, um, you know, what Biafra should be expecting because most of them have been expecting their relatives, friends, families, and all that without hope and all that. We want to know how the legal team are working hard to ensure that all Biafras who are held in different prisons and cells, including our leader, will be released in no distant time. Thank you so much. You know, just like what I told you before we, are, before we started this interview about effort and making. We, we usually say much over the media before now. And when we discover about so many people who are, I don't know, if in your own terminology, you call them infiltrators. So, and the mischief and losers that are causing. So, we decided to be very circumspect with things we say to the public and believe in action than words, and which has been working out for us. So, Mike, uh, Mike Obai, um, Obai is one of the places our. Uh, that that I will never forget in, in a haste. Let me just give you this background. When Mike, when Mike was arrested, we brought our attention, and we mainly followed up and filed an application for. We are we initially thought we were brought to Abuja here, so an information we got from the relevant uh, people who were detained and released was that Mike Obai was then here. Now, unknown to us, that the person that was then here was then Mike Kano. So we now went to court to file <coughs> the release. I'm sorry, I'm digressing. So, and we proceeded in court. I won the case in court. Because also made a, 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 made, the court made a, <coughs> a, a award of compensatory damages against them, SSS for detention of arrest and detention of Mike Cannon. And the Mike Cannon was eventually released. We well, waited for him to be, to, on a final inquiry, and I discovered that the person with it, when, when the person came out, and I discovered that this person is not Mike Cannon. Okay. Mike Obai, Obai. we don't want back to Iowa State after uh, making uh, assessing some information. Mm -hmm. So we went back to Iowa State to commence an application for, uh, an application for his release. And thankfully, yesterday, I uh, ended in process, as I, as I always say. So the courts <coughs> found his arrest, illegal detention, and uh, further detention unlawful. Um, de declared and directed the police to release him without any form of condition immediately for truth. Proceeded to award the damages of 60 million other damages against the police and also cost of action 200,000. Now, having said that, you also follow up. Let me say something. We are doing much behind the scene. We are doing much for people that are in detention, people that have been arrested behind the scene. And all those, all the all the cases we are finding court following up, we don't really like making them public. Because most times uh, we have come to realize as people, even some of us, some people who call our colleagues, are working against our interests, even in some of these cases. So, and not talk, talk less of about the, of those who are who consider themselves as part of one motion. That's how most times when you see me right, I qualify them as a motion. Like, I have a reason for saying that. So, they are all there working against in terms of cases you are handling court. So, either by their pronouncement or by their, their, their by their probably by their write ups. So, uh, we now devise a way of managing it because uh, in our we both probably say that panabo why mutangwe it is mutangwe we are mutangano here now we we keep one of us now and the man just come to my house now everything is okay why you are not like it now go hand the man I'm not we are not going so in the hotel I was going to check it out when I was down off on the plane I saw a good man I'm only going to like it maybe the chat the man hand around and I am not going to find the so we this are suddenly we are adopting. So I'm be assured that everybody being detained illegally by the police, SSS, or military must do this. Place. We came back from Mina State, Mina, Niger State, yes. It's for me to say this to the public. I'm not too much. 
the very very serious development we are working also taking up uh, people that came from Airborne State because let them also hope they will listen to this interview they've been calling me sending me text and I'm not good at responding to messages out of my whatsapp or text for reasons best known to me so now let me tell them those that were arrested on their way going back after the first appearance of Amazonian in prison in, in, in fire court. they were arrested somewhere sometimes somewhere in uh, in Kogi in Lukuja and brought to the SSS from SSS an action was fired in fire court by a colleague of mine and they transferred them to to see where Daji uh, Niger State where they usually tell people we don't throw them up to the Niger State we have filed application for the release in the United States, all of them, including the data too. So we filed application for the release and also for court to declare their detention and arrest illegal. Do you know? And we force the military to file a response. Because from actions we are taking person will file. Usually when you file, they ignore you. Because they, they believe they are above the law. So this time around, they file response to those applications. It's coming up sometime. It's coming up this month for, for, for hearing on the application. So and what an interesting part of it is that the military, in their counter agreement to our application, they stated on oath that those being referred to them to the ten day are coming from executive order. You know what it means? Are being referred to them on executive order. So <coughs> apparently, they are not being they are not they are not being they are not those being detained at that barracks that we have been detained that Niger State are being detained at the larger of the executive or the president and others. So that's many of it. So now we have responded to that application. For them to tell us whether that president, whosoever has given that order, is above the law. If you're not running, you're not running a constitutional democracy, they should come to court and tell the court. So we are not resting our rules and sure that everybody unlawfully arrested and illegally detained are freed. We're not less resting at all. I can assure you my life all over the place. So that's why we are managing <coughs> information, managing strategies, managing things to say to the public. But we are, we are most personally appealing to motion again to bear with us. We are we are limited in our intents to stay for reasons for their own for their own interest too and for the interest of everybody. So and we believe that in the end it shall surely end in praises. God Almighty is always on the throne and shall always be there for us. And thank you so much, uh, my brother, for coming and may God bless you. Thank you very much, Barrister. We want to appreciate you and also encourage you. Continue to pray for you and your colleagues who are giving yourself sleepless nights and uh, taking your time to do this very job. We know it is not easy to represent IPOB and Nam de Kano. We know the intimidations, we know the harassment that are attached to it. But despite all this, you have remained firm and very formidable doing your job as a lawyer, a refined lawyer at that. It's not easy. We want to continue to encourage you. We want to continue to support you in any way we can like this. Uh, you are a very good lawyer. The world knows about it. Everybody talks about it. We want to appreciate you as well because you are doing a good job. Your records are there in the open for anyone to assess. Thank you. And all those who are also assisting you in achieving all these records and results. We want to also let you know that you, the more... Uh, results you get the more challenges and the more bigger it becomes to you. You don't have to get tired or get frustrated because those who are against you are not happy that you're getting the good results. Yeah. Just as you're saying it, the more of those who are uh, you know, in us who are infiltrating our ranks, you know, pretending to be among us, sure. thank God that they are being busted every day sure. Sure. and we are not getting tired of them. Um, we are reaching you here. This is Sumuchuku Writers reaching you live from the office of our amiable um, barrister, the formidable barrister, Barrister Saifani, the council. the council of our IPOB and Mazenam de Kano. He is our lead council. We want to thank you, our barrister, for giving us this very time and explanations you have given to us. We'll be leaving you, be our friends from here. Whenever we have any other information, we will do our best to give you uh, the information without wasting our time. Thank you so much. We'll be coming to you next time when there is need for it. This is uh, Agotha Chuwondo reporting live for Umuchuku Writers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Muchineke, too.